Due to the success of our last Q&A video, we've had so many comments from you guys, it's only fair that I respond. All luxury watches, car houses are going to collapse when this recession really kicks in. Thanks for your comment, Mortgage Martin. I, I believe you're obviously like a mortgage broker or something. So that's just a doom and gloom negative comment. We'll get loads on the channel. I do not actually respond to comments like this. I just think they're very, very negative. They won't actually base it on anything. There's no debate to be had. And it's a comment that's just a generic comment which you do see a lot of. Sometimes they're from clients who are never gonna buy a watch or just follow the market and put doom and gloom because they're actually never going to own a watch and for that reason they like to be negative about it. You know, at the end of the day, I've covered this other videos, you know, when the market's low, there's still buyers out there and the market's high, there's still buyers out there. It makes no difference to our industry whatsoever. The Rolex train never stops, ever, never, no matter what is going on in the world. You know, whether you want to buy it to wear or it becomes a commodity to the prices going up. So, you know, at the end of the day, appreciate your comment, but, you know, if you've got anything to base that on, please let me know, Martin. Other than that, you'll just get no response. So this is a comment from Ash. I remember him saying Rolex is on the way up, but I want to remind the world that watch market does not function in silo. The big drop will come soon. The hype is gone. The drop will be easier when the overall market drops. It's coming, check Dow Jones, more to come. Trust me, I'm pretty honest too, since you only buy watches and not sell them. So yeah, thanks for your comment. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, some, of the, some watches are going up. I can't, you know, I'm not going to make it up, I'm not going to lie, some of the watches are actually going up in price. We have seen that, some of the prices have stabilised, we have seen that, and some of the bigger pieces have come down. You know, we have seen that as well. But, you know, the actual fact that it's going to be a better marketplace, I do actually have to agree with you, because at the end of the day, once the deals have gone that have came in for the wrong reasons, once the clients have come in and bought just for, you know, trading up and trading down, and, you know, trying to make money out of the industry, and they're gone. We're back to the original people who used to be interested in the watch market from the beginning. These people were, had a genuine interest in watches, enjoyed wearing them and over time they made a bit of money and for me that is what this watch business is all about. This is one that cost Rolex about 700 to make, materials, labour, people are effing nuts for paying for a watch what a new car costs. So yeah, thanks for your comment. There's no way does it cost $700 to produce a Rolex. We all know that Rolex to produce a model takes a full year to produce. So, you know, I mean, what are you basing your actual comment on? You know, I mean, the fact that people are nuts for paying for watch, that's all relative to your life. Obviously other people have different lives and what's relative to them. So, you know, at the end of the day, it depends how much your car is because we sell watches up to a hundred thousand pounds and we sell watches of like 6,000 pounds. So depending on what's relative to you and your life, you've just got to bear in mind that that's your opinion, probably minority, probably 1% of the watch market's uh, opinion. But yeah, you're on. Charlie, great channel. I have a question on the Yachtmaster 40 Rhodium dial that became popular on the back of scarcity of other Rolex sports models. Do you think it will continue to be popular and trade above retail? I think I actually did reply to this comment. So thanks for your comment, Marcin. Yeah, so this particular model was one that is, let's just say, not the most sought after model. It is a really nice model as well, by the way, but is one that it was hanging on the back of the coattails of all the other models when the Rolex's prices shot up, which they did. And then it became one that was really sought after. So we saw a price of like 18 grand last year I think retail on that watch is around about 11-ish somewhere around there there's coming two dial combinations the blue and the rhodium blue is around about a list watch or just over for us to buy and the rhodium a little bit over list so the question that you're asking you know will it be popular and will it trade above retail I've got a funny feeling that's going to go back to a retail watch and maybe slightly lower so lovely watch but definitely one that is not worth a lot of a list. Buy what you like, if it goes up, happy days. If it goes down, you're still having something you like. That is one million percent what you guys should be doing because I get questions all the time of invest and put away and all this sort of thing. And yet they are the best investment long-term, but always buy what you want, always buy what you like. And no matter what happens on the market, whether it goes up or down, you will never be disappointed. If it goes up, great. If it goes down, it doesn't because you like it anyway. So always buy wear what you like. Do you think about the root beer? The price is very low now. Thank you. So yeah, thanks for your question. Cover this in other videos. Really popular watches, the root beer, really sought after. Trading just above RRP. Uh, retail a little bit more than RRP, but one that's extremely sought after watch. So definitely one that if you get offered it, you should be buying it. You know, you can flip it quickly for a quick profit, or if not, just hold it, wear it and enjoy it. And over time, you'll see a nice increase. But yeah, definitely a sought after watch, one that we get asked for a lot, and one that we see trade a lot between dealers' hands daily. So yeah, it's a yes from me.
Shania Tread in a GMT 116710 LN for a C dwell of 43126600 as an investment piece. Thank you. So I'd actually reply to this uh, comment. So yeah, thanks for your comment. The GMT is a discontinued watch, the one that will slow, go up slowly price wise. Uh, is one that is actually sought after. The C dwell of 43 red, bigger watch, will suit uh, an appeal to less people in the market because it is a bigger watch. Not that people don't like it, it just wears bigger and looks bigger. It's got a much thicker case, it's a much wider case. It does sit high on the wrist so some people you know do not prefer that it's what they call like a beefed up sub so yeah a completely different looking watch collectability wise with the other one being discontinued I'd say is a better investment for me personally and one that I definitely think you can put away or wear and you know you see a nice return Sea Dweller 43 we do sell loads and for whatever reason I know they're a bit of a Marmite watch but we actually sell loads of them I think on the cost of price it's you know it's not much over RRP definitely a beautiful watch but not I wouldn't trade one for the other side stick with your GMT. Keep the videos coming. Do you think it's the right time to buy the AP 26240ST or it's best to wait out for longer? Cheers. So yeah, I have covered the AP sort of topic in other videos. It's a really difficult one for me this because with APs, you've got to understand that if you really like an AP and you really want to buy it, as much as most dealers will actually buy one for stock, if you choose your dealer wisely and buy at the right price, you're going to get a really good deal. So Honestly, if you want that watch, I would say buy it as long as the price is right and low because over time that will start to go up again. APs are really low in the marketplace. So there's two sides. The dealer side is, would I want to buy and stock it? No. If I was a private client looking to buy it, do you think yeah, I can actually capitalize on the market being low? Yes. So as long as you're happy to buy that and there's a chance it might go down after you've bought it, before it goes up, then definitely buy it. But they are very, very low in the marketplace. Have they reached the bottom? Honestly, nobody knows, but I wouldn't stock it. But that's not me to say you shouldn't buy it. What do you think of the chocolate racing dial Daytona? Stunning watch, really, really nice watch. So that came in the old one, which was the leather. We sold one recently. And then the new one started, I think around 2017-ish on the Oyster Flex strap. And then I think they discontinued around 2020, somewhere around there. So that is a super rare dial, super collectible dial. Really beautiful looking watch, especially with that dial on the rose gold. So yeah, definitely something that I think is a lot of watch for the money, something different that you won't see. I love that particular model, the Oyster Flex Daytona anyway. I think it's a great model. As you can see, I wear the Pikachu. But yeah, I mean, as far as desirability, collectability and what have you, compared to some of the dials that Rolex have produced, now the discontinued Arabic racing dial is stunning. This is quite a good one actually. So this is from Eamon M. I don't believe anything these guys say. He's probably trying to sell you something else. So thank you for your comment. If you watched our channel, you'll actually see what we actually do and how we actually talk about our videos and the content that we actually put in. So we are here, we're a business first and foremost. You've got to remember that. So we're never gonna do anything that jeopardizes our business. And what does a good business have is repeat clients. So it's very important for us as a business to give the correct information. If that means us not selling a watch because it's not right for the client, then so be it. If that means advising the client to choose a different watch that is more suitable to them and a better investment, if that's what they're looking for long term, then we will do that. So we carry all the models of Rolexes. We have contacts in the trade where we can get any watch that you want within a short space of time. That is not a problem for us. But what our first and prime most importance is to keep you as a client and retain you as a client. And for that reason, we have to be open and honest with the information information we get. So yeah, thanks for your comment. We are honest and we are here for the long term. Right, next one from Fighting Mango. What do you reckon 116500 LWN discontinued this year? Blue Sky Dweller discontinued. So thanks for your comment. Uh, one's obviously the Steel Daytona, one is the Blue Sky Dweller. Again, it's absolute lottery. Nobody knows what's going to get discontinued. People are hoping that it gets discontinued so they actually go up in price. I'd be very surprised if they discontinued the steel uh, ceramic Daytona because it is the, if not most, sought after steel watch that Rolex actually produced that you cannot get. It used to be an 11 year waiting list. We have clients that we buy off who have a real good relationship with their ADs, who have spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds over the last few years and still cannot get a stainless steel Daytona. So why are they gonna discontinue, in my opinion, the most sought after grail goat 
of the Rolex Steel Sports range. It just is not gonna happen. I personally would like to see a slightly bigger one. So obviously this is the 40 mil, I'd like to see a 41 or 42. That's my personal preference. But at the end of the day, you know, it's the GOAT for a reason and it'd be very, very unusual for it to be discontinued. I doubt it very much. Blue Sky Dweller, beautiful watch, covered in loads of videos, real good value for money in the current market, about 20,000 pounds, not, not that much of RP for one that is really hard to get in that range. Again, if it got discontinued, I think it would be a shame because it is so popular, but I just can't see it. The thing is when the Sky Dweller came out, they had the precious metal model, so, that was one that they brought out and they told everybody they're not going to do a steel and gold or a steel. Had loads of movements sat on the shell, didn't have any use for them, so they brought out another range, which is steel and steel and gold. So therefore, obviously, now, you know, they've become really sought after. And the RRP on that watch, if you can get one, to compare to the market price and the other models, similar like the Yacht Master 2, you know, is real good value for money. So yeah, I'd be really surprised and it'd be a shame if they did. Look at you being waiting. <laughs> so this is a comment from Michael Liu. You are the younger version of Paul Thorpe. Love your content, mate. So thanks for the, your comment. I mean, I'll take that as a compliment. Paul has obviously been uh, doing YouTube videos for a couple of years now. You know, we are new to the YouTube industry. On saying that, I don't believe that we look like beginners. I do believe we are actually a very slick, well-run company. And hopefully you guys can see that and watch the content that we're doing. But you know, I appreciate that. I'll tell as a compliment, but you know what's gonna happen in years to come? People will be saying Paul Thorpe is an older version of the Honest Watch dealer. So this is a question from Robbie Dazzler. Prices will keep dropping. Look at how they have already dropped and still those watches are sitting there. When used watches are on par with retail, then all those buying at retail will not be able to flip for a profit. So then they will drop again. Remember, watches are not an asset, they are a watch and only a few would rather a watch to capital in the bank. Money is safe in the bank. Anything uh, could happen to a watch. A collector will collect regardless, but they're not. It's quite a long message, this in for the profit. So buy a watch you like and wear it, and, and no matter what you wear, it goes up or down, buying a watch to make money is now a risk. Only my opinion, but it's also a view of many economists now too. Many thanks for your comment. You got a good point there, really, and I've touched on this in other videos. The fact it's quite a generic thing, saying prices will keep dropping, look at how they've already dropped. Yeah, but the, we've covered that in many other videos, and every YouTuber out there has done that. So that's already been covered, and obviously why they actually rose and why they've dropped. But we're now 2023, and we're now in the current market. Saying that the flippers and, and the watches and what have you, uh, they can't flip for profit and they'll drop again. Some of the watches, you are correct, some of the watches are not being taken by flippers which we have covered in the videos. Some of the like the steel and golds uh, not being taken. Some of the ones with a little profit in, some of the steel with a little profit are not being bought. That doesn't mean the prices are gonna drop because you got to remember, if one guy, there's always gonna be some guy that takes it on the list, they'll always take it. So there's always gonna be the watches in the market. That is never gonna stop but it will slow down the price. They're not just gonna suddenly drop. There's no reason for the market to suddenly just sort of drop. Like I say, we have the price increases every year from Rolex. We've got the Watch and Wonders coming out soon. So, you know, it's a really valid point. And I do agree with you on buy to wear. You should always buy what you want to buy to wear. So no matter what happens, you know, you're always safe and it doesn't matter. You're not gonna have an upset day because you bought for Invest and it's actually gone down. It has weeded out a lot of the people that came into our industry, both clients and dealers where they actually bought or came into the industry for the wrong reasons. Because of the boom we had, everybody jumped on the bandwagon. You know, our private clients literally just phoned them up going, please just sell me a watch, anything, just please sell me a watch because they were frightened of missing out on the prices going up so quickly, which they did. But now we're back to the old days, we're back to the, you know, people buying to wear, people pie exchanging a lot of watches as well, which we've seen, you know, getting the grail watch that they've always wanted, which is great, you know, trading up, trading down, moving the stock around. We've got a lot of clients actually looking to move stock around. So some of the collections they've got, liquidating some of them, but they're replacing them with other watches. So that's a good point to know. The fact is they're not actually, bailing out of their collections and thinking, oh my God, you know, I've lost so much money on this, I've made so much money on this, I'm gonna sell now. They're actually just moving, becoming more liquid and moving their stock around. So that's a, a really, but they're actually replacing it as well. So you do need to know that. So yeah, it's, it, you know, it's not a bad comment there. I don't say that was a negative comment. I'd just like to know why you're saying the prices will keep dropping because the point that you've made there about flippers not taking the watches and why this will drop, that, that's just not relevant to what actually will happen because somebody else will take that watch and it will still come onto the market. So that the actual volume of stock you know, we'll still be there. This is a question from a guy called Uwat Mate. Oh, you what mate, isn't it? <laughs> you what mate? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 
you what mate hi mate is saying liking your channel thank you for that i may buy an unworn starbucks 2021 since box with tags etc mate wants 13k for it is it worth it for a long-term investment i think i've applied i said yes definitely buy it long-term great watch there are quite a lot on the market but you know around about that sort of price you're absolutely fine prices we're seeing this side of the counter are very similar so you're not overpaying i'd ask him for a bit better price if he's, he's a good mate but yeah you know it's, it's a really good watch and like i said at the end of the day you know it's a popular watch and your money is safe so i loved replying to your guys comments if you've got any more please drop in the comments below and i'll see you next time